happy Tuesday, everybody. Chris Hassel, Mandy Guerra, Brady Quinn, Pete Prisco. Usually, usually Tuesdays are for Pete Prisco's power ranking. But he had the Browns in his top five going into the postseason, had them making a deep run into the playoffs. They got blown out by the really? Texans. So we are handing the keys over to Brady Quinn. Is that why we're doing this? That's why. That's exactly why. I tried to so grill you bad. last week. Actually, why would you have the Browns my, number five? This was my idea. <laughs> Please start off by asking this. This is your idea? Why is this your idea? Because I wanted to see you do some rankings for a change, and I'll pick them apart. <laughs> I, okay, that's perfectly fine. Now, I have rationale and justification for mine. You really don't. I, 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 I really do. So what, Pete never had rationale and justification for his? No. I don't. He, Pete doesn't take into account head-to-head -head play, <laughs> which I think we'd all I agree. Like, if you've seen these two teams play before, and one team beat the other, you'd say, well, should they be ranked ahead of them? Pete doesn't believe that. By the way, I've seen his rankings that are, we're going to unveil here. Give us a and grade. you're a prisoner of the moment. That's Ooh. what you're doing. Oh, all right. That's what this is. I'm let's not take foreshadowing take a look at the power here. rankings uh, and find out if Brady is a prisoner of the moment. Brady Quinn's power rankings heading into the divisional round. The two teams we have yet to see. Uh, the Ravens and the 49ers sitting at 102, followed by the Bills and the Lions. Kansas City coming in fifth. And the Packers, this only seven seed to make it past the wild card round, sitting at the and let's start with the Bills coming in at number three, Pete. Uh, what do you think about that? That's where they should be. You see I the no graphic, by that. the way? You see how they scribbled out your name? They put in Miles? Kind of neat. That's a good job by the I, graphics team there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they won't be as good, but that's okay. That's Wait, uh, so you're, you're all hot and bothered about these rankings, and then the first question we ask you, like, I oh, agree. No, 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 perfect. Well, there are some I don't agree with. The Bills at number three, I do agree with. I okay. think that's a perfect spot for Buffalo. Right now, you'd say they're the third team in the in the in the playoffs. Did in you guys playoffs. fist bump just now? We did. Huh? We <laughs> really did. Oh. He, you know, because he's he's hurt from yesterday. I abused him on camera yesterday, and he felt he's bad about it. On camera. So, <laughs> yesterday, when you called Baker Mayfield a failure. No, I didn't call Baker Mayfield. Yes, you a did. Failure. I called the pick a failure. Let's get that right. By the way, Buffalo is the third best team in the playoffs right now. I don't okay. think there's any doubt about that. I am concerned though, Brady, about all those injuries on defense and they had a bunch of them again uh, in that game against Pittsburgh so that is concerning but yes they're the third best team in the playoffs. They did but the difference too is that they get KC coming to their house we know how good home field advantage can be too uh, for those divisional teams especially for the Buffalo Bills team that you'd make the case might be the hottest in the NFL. They won five in a row to get into the playoffs obviously a, a big time win over the Pittsburgh Steelers you said was even more dominant than maybe even the score looked like so I'm glad we're on the same page there. The next team's the Detroit Lions. And, and I'm, I'm sure that's where you've got some sort of disagreement with. But I think when you look at the fact of what they did during the course of the regular season, they did beat Kansas City head to head. So that's why I gave them the nod over a team like KC, which yeah, you're going to shake your head about. a couple about, years ago. It was. It was the beginning of the season. <laughs> yeah, week one. Yeah, well, I'm just it was telling you. a long you. time ago. There was no Kelsey I, I, they, in they, that game and no Chris Jones in that game. They watched them play and Detroit beat them. So okay. I'm going to give them the edge right now. And they also have the edge because they're playing at home in the divisional round, which is a, a big edge ahead if of KC on the road. If they played each other right now on a neutral field, who would you pick? Uh, I don't know. I might pick Detroit after what I saw them do. Yeah, I'd pick Kansas City. Their deep, okay. Detroit's defense is not playing very well. And yeah. You could say it's not playing very well. Played well enough to be able to win in the wild card well round. Enough, but and they get well. an opportunity now to host a, a divisional round playoff game. They very well could be in the NFC Championship game. If they met in the middle of the country on a neutral field, you'd take the Lions. So where did they play to start the season, Pete? They played in Kansas City. What was the score, though? It was week one. What was the score? It was a, a, they handled it. It was a, it was a, yeah, we've eight. watched it. So, I, again, I can, I can say right now, has the defense played the way they were the first half of the season? No. The secondary struggled of the second half of the season, uh, but this defense also was battling some injuries. They've got to back healthy. I think they'll be fine. There's one forward. of my, there's one of my problems right there. The Lions ahead of the Chiefs. They shouldn't be. Okay, and so where would you have the Lions? Huh? Where would you have the Lions? Probably down right below them. Okay, five. Yeah. There you go. Lions host the Bucks Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. W w could you argue that their second round game might be easier than their first round game against the Rams? Uh, you could make that case. Yeah. I, I think the Bucks are playing well, though. I mean, don't, don't discount the Bucks. I, I wouldn't surprise me to see the Bucks go in there and win. But you I, just called Baker Mayfield a failure yesterday. No, I did not. Man, I called the pick a failure in Cleveland. He, he did actually go off. By the way, ba it, Baker Mayfield has three playoff wins, right? Yeah. And uh, that's the most of any quarterback drafted by the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> He's the only one <laughs> in the last. <laughs> and season. as but I you, said, you've also said, or, or no, you said yesterday they should keep him on. 
But they're well, for sure they going to extend. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's Shaquille. no doubt about that. No. To, to his point, though, I think the thing for Tampa, you know, is they can exploit weaknesses on the outside. And we've seen at times through the secondary for the Lions struggle if they can't get a pass rush. And so if they can block him up, Baker Mayfield showcased that they can throw down the field. It's not just Evans. Got when we saw David Moore. Now, obviously, the tackling was awful for the Philadelphia Eagles. So uh, I think if, if the Lions can just tackle better, you're not going to see as much yards after the catch. But, you know, look, the Lions, the Lions defense has not played as well as they did the first half of the season when they blew out Kansas City in Kansas City and to start the season. They beat Tampa this year, remember, at Tampa, but it was a close game late, and then Jamison Williams had the long play to win the game. So uh, I think this is going to be a tight game, really tight, both ways. You've said the Lions should be behind the Chiefs. What do you think about the Texans coming in behind the Lions at number six? I, I think that's too high. Uh, they're not better than the Packers right now. I don't think they're better Ooh, than the Packers. So you're trying to tell me that C.J. Stroud hasn't had that, that kind of season? C.J. Stroud's really good. Don't okay, get me wrong. Well, if you look Jordan at the, Love's playing just as well right now. Here's the difference. The, one, they're division winner. Two, if you looked at the entire, if you looked at the entire body of work of the season. C.J. Stroud at one point was in the MVP conversation. He's locked up the Offensive Rookie of the Year. I, you'd be hard-pressed to find a quarterback outside of Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, playing as good a football as C.J. Stroud right now. Is that fair? Jordan Love. I, I think the second half of the season. We weren't saying that in the first half of the season. From start to finish, since C.J. Stroud has played this year when he's been healthy, he is balled out. And he and also, look, I know both, both have been banged up on the outside of wide receiver. I would say that right now this Houston team is that hot team that's scary the way Stroud's playing, even with the defense played last week, too. So I've got them a little bit ahead. I've got them ahead in the fact, too, that they won their division. There has to be something for that. They also lost to Carolina. Think about that. They lost, and he did not play well in that game. They lost to Carolina. I, look, Kudos to C.J. Stroud. He's phenomenal. Jordan Love's been just as good in the He's second half of the season, if not better, in terms of the numbers. So I think if you look at it, that's why I'd put I'd put. Whose the defense do you trust more? Same. I don't trust either one of them, to be so honest. So how high would you have the Packers? Above the Texans. I think right, the rest well, of them. We can get into that. Well, I, I, I do want to go back to, oh, we already changed the graphics, so I can't. Thanks, you can. Amanda. You can. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to the Texans because <laughs> you guys wanted to talk about week one. Remember what happened week one? C.J. Stroud's very first start. Look at that. They it was the in whole Baltimore. For you. Who knew we could work this kind of magic, right? Anything to put into that? The fact that C.J. Stroud has seen the Ravens already. Yeah, there's definitely something to that. I mean, and I always feel like a team that uh, was on the losing end, too, of a game early in the season probably has a leg up because you can take more away from those losses sometimes and how that game went. I think he's a much better quarterback now than when he faced Baltimore earlier in the season. So uh, there's no doubt about it. I think if you if you look at the way the, this Houston Texans team is constructed, they're going to have to have him lead the way with the big plays down the field like we've seen him do all season long to combat probably a defense that's going to struggle stopping Lamar Jackson, the rushing attack, and even that passing game. I think the only thing you worry about in this matchup moving forward is Houston's been on a roll. And they are, again, one of those hot teams we always talk about as they get in the playoffs. And, and you've got a you know Baltimore Ravens team that's going to have a lot of rest in between when they last played when they played now. Is there a little rust? Can you have a slow start to the first half of a divisional round game and still be able to come out on top? You know, of we talked game? about a lot of pressure on Dak Prescott last week, and he played like he was a guy under pressure. And Lamar Jackson has some playoff pressure on him, too. He has to prove that he can be the same guy in the postseason. So that's something. If the Texans can get out to a lead and have the Ravens starting to think about things, and particularly Lamar Jackson, then who? Who knows? But you're right. Look, I love what CJ. I, I compared him to Marino. Isn't that high praise mm -hmm. coming from me? That's the way he reminds me of a guy that's so calm, cool, walks right out there and isn't isn't bothered by anything. It makes all the throws and all the reads. I love what he does, but I just don't think the rest of that team is ready for that. Yet. The only exception to what you're saying about the pressure is I, I think the pressure was mounting on Mike McCarthy too, and in part because yeah. of how Jerry Jones handled that situation. Yeah. I think that kind of has its waterfall effect down to the team, and the team played tight because they understood how much this meant to them. They understood where they were in the past yeah. it, it's different to me I think when you look at the Baltimore Ravens yes not for Lamar maybe but not for John Harbaugh and I don't no. think he's preaching that to his team I think they know how good this team is and I still think I still think this offense has another level to it in the passing game like we've seen bits and pieces of it all coming together for Baltimore I, I still think they can turn on even more so with Todd Munkin calling plays in this passing and game. it's different you know, when he's played in the playoffs before, he played in that Greg right. Roman offense. It was different. It was a run-heavy offense. This is not. So it's, I'm curious to see what he's like right from the get-go because he's only, I think he's only averaged 13 points a game in the postseason for, for Lamar Jackson. That's not good enough. The other thing is if weather plays a factor, I think it impacts Houston more 
than Baltimore. Baltimore's kind of built to play in those conditions in that environment. And so if, if all of a sudden this becomes, hey, the wind, wind gusts are somewhere in the 30 plus mile an hour range, consistent winds at 20 miles per hour, that then ends up impacting, I think, the passing game, probably more so Houston than anything else. That weather. So Amanda, you'll have to keep we, us up. We, we're going to do Thank you. We're going to break down these games <laughs> yeah. in a little bit here, and I will find the weather forecast for you. Um, okay, so, so Pete, at the very beginning, you said Brady was a prisoner of the moment. Uh, could, could we not argue that about Pete Briscoe? Look, you talked about Jordan Love being very good, but coming off that very impressive win, Brady has them eighth. Is Pete wanting them higher, being a prisoner of the moment? Yeah, he's been a prisoner of the moment, Jordan Love. Jordan Love's played phenomenal in the second half of the season. He has. He had, he had a great game, too, in Dallas on the road to kick off the playoffs. And so I give him all the credit in the world. My concern is their defense. Like, that's really what it's about, in my opinion, is I don't trust their defense right now moving forward throughout the course of the playoffs. And, and that's where, you know, when we look at all these teams, look, they're all playoff teams. Like, right now, we're talking about the top eight teams, top, you know, 20, you know, whatever quartile in the NFL right now. They're all really good football teams. But you got to rank them somehow. And I think that's my biggest concern moving forward is as much as you look at last week's game and go, wow, how dominant they were offensively, how great Jordan Love was, I'm still saying at the end of it, why would Dallas have any shot whatsoever? Like, why were they able to come back into that game and give up, what, 400 yards or whatever it was to Dak Prescott throwing the football? There's some problems there. Like, it's this defense... Garbage time. You can say that all you want, come but th the reality is this defense has had its struggles this it season. Has. And that's my concern, and that's why they're sitting at eighth. It has nothing to do with Jordan Love. It has to do with their defense. The Texas defense has had struggles at times, too. They didn't look them. quite as bad last week. They no. seemed to shut down no. anything well, that flacco, the Browns wanted to flacco, do. Flacco, Flacco. So that was... I, I give the defense credit. <laughs> oh, man. So. Who, would you, who would be your last team? The Texans would be the last team. Okay. Yeah. What I, do you I, say about the Packers? I think I think Packers are one of those teams that watch out. Seriously, you talk about the Texans, watch out. Watch for the out. Packers. That's what you're, you're telling San Francisco to watch out. Well, they they have by the way, weekend. after yesterday with his proclamation about Baker Mayfield, now he's saying watch out. So what, Procl I, mean, I didn't make a proclamation. You did. No, I didn't. didn't. I will say when the Bills had a 17 percent chance to make the postseason, Pete did tell us then, watch out for the Buffalo Bills. You got to watch out for my watch out. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> you like your best bets. Huh? Hey, but good this week. That was good this week. And by the way, my prop hit. Did yours? Yes, it no, did. It didn't. No, it didn't. Win-win. Took win, the win, over win. in Packers. You're still, Cowboys. You're still losing. Huh? You're still losing. I don't Pete, think you on the pick six today? Yes. Okay, pick six podcast with Pete Prisco this afternoon.